Well, it's good to be back recording tutorials. It's been a while since I've done this, and I had another channel under my old business name, but I've started a new one, so I appreciate you coming by and checking out the new channel and taking time to watch this tutorial. Hopefully it'll be useful to you. Oops, how did that get there? So what we're going to look at today is a request that I had this last week about creating a retro vintage poster look using textures. So we're going to be using texture layers today to create a vintage retro sort of look that I hope will be useful to you in your designs. All the textures I'm using are available to you and can be downloaded along with this tutorial. So look for the links and the files in the description of the video and in the post that this was posted with. They are all my own textures I created and I would encourage you to look around for textures and old books that you can use to scan in and create your own textures for your designs. But for today, let's go up and create a new file. I'm going to go to new and for our purposes we're going to go to web size today from the presets and I'm going to do 600 width and 800 height on the pixel count and all the rest should be preset for you from the web custom. Now I'm going to go to the name and just set it to retro poster silly caps lock. Hit OK and we have our document created. It's important that your document be 600 wide by 800 high because all the files that I'm going to provide you for this tutorial uh, are formatted for that size. So now that we have that, we're going to import one of the files that I created for you. We're going to go to File, Place, and select the Retro Poster Texture 1 and place it into your document. Now when you first place it you're going to see these brackets. Every time you place you'll do the same action. As soon as it places you're going to hit enter and that's going to commit the changes of those placements. Now sometimes Photoshop places them just slightly off center. I'm going to go over to my move tool and bump it with my keyboard arrows once left, once up just to fill in the little gaps that the place creates. Now that I've done that, I've got a nice base for my poster. I've got a nice little texture here. You know, it's kind of blurry. It's not well defined, but that's okay. It's what I want, and it's the color that I want to for the base of kind of this vintage old age look that I'm going to give it. I'm going to place my second file, which will be Retro Poster Lines. Hit Place. Again, I'm going to hit Enter. And in the case that it doesn't place it properly, uh, feel free to bump it just like we did with the previous. Now, that's great, but it actually looks kind of weird. The texture is not showing through it. So we want to change our blending mode so that we can see the texture through this layer. And in this case, I'm going to go to Color Burn for my blending mode. Set my lines layer to Color Burn. Now that's going to change what the actual colors look like, but it's also going to show through that bottom texture so we get a nice uh, personality to our lines that looks like they were actually printed onto that textured paper. Now that's not quite the layer of texture I want yet, but we're going to deal with that later. Right now I want to add another graphical element, which is a heart. Because I believe love is important, I'm going to have you go over to File and select Place again. And we're going to find the Retro Heart PSD. Hit Place. It should add this directly to the center of your image, already preset and lined up. You're going to hit Enter. And now we have a nice big white heart in the center of our image. It's not really where I want it. I actually want it down lower. So I'm going to grab my Move tool, which is V again on your shortcuts. Click and drag down. As I do, I'm going to hold down the Shift key. That'll just keep it from sneaking away to the left or the right, and it'll keep it aligned towards the center. Now that's about where I want it. That looks good. However, it's really bright white. That doesn't really fit in with my look. So I want to find a way to add texture to it. Now you could add textures on top of it or you could you know, uh, change the blending mode of the heart. But actually there's an easier way to do it in this case. And that is just go to the heart layer name, right click on it, and create clipping mask. What this is going to do is clip it to the layer below it. And in this case, the layer below it is already set to color burn, so this layer is going to inherit the properties of the layer below it. So it color burns as well. So now it bleeds out uh, all that white, and you see the nice texture through it underneath. 
Now that's really cool. We're getting there, but I kind of want still more texture. I want to fade and age the lines a little bit more so they almost look painted, a little more textured. So I'm going to go to File, Place, and I'm going to select Retro Poster Texture 2 JPEG. Place that. Hit Enter, Commit. Now this is kind of an ugly looking layer actually by itself. It's uh, very crude, but it's actually just what I want. I'm going to go into the blending mode and hit overlay. Now this is going to apply that mode onto all the layers below it, so I'm overlaying that texture onto the layers below it, and uh, it's really a bit extreme. I actually just want it onto the lines. The way I can do this is by also creating a clipping mask on this layer, just like I did with my heart. So you right click on the title of the layer, and then select clipping mask. Oh, that's great. It gives it a nice fade. It gives it a nice distressed sort of look, but it's a little more than I wanted. So I'm just going to adjust the opacity of this image down to about 40%. That's good. I like that. That's about what I was looking for. Now we've gotten some good texture onto it, but still this background layer could be a little better. It's a little blurry. It's the color I want, but it's not really expressing the texture that I want. So I'm going to add one more texture layer onto my document. I'm going to go to File, Place, Retro Poster, Texture 3. I'm going to place that into my document and hit Enter to commit the changes. I'm going to bump it left and up like I did just to close off the gaps around the edges if Place leaves you with some of those gaps. Now, this is a really cool texture. It's a nice paper that I've bumped up the contrast on and I've desaturated so we have a black and white look. And I want to apply it to the rest of the image below. It's important that this layer is sitting on top of all my other images and then I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay. Now, if I turn this layer off and back on, you can see the difference that it made. It added a really nice folded sort of paper look in some areas, almost like it had been creased up, aged, smudged, and you can see the details of this layer a lot better. It gives a nice texture to the entire image, and we're almost there. But of course, in every poster, you're going to have some text. So we're going to add some font in there just for good measure at the end. I'm going to select my type tool, which is T on the shortcut menu or right here on your toolbar. I'm just going to click somewhere off here on the side and it looks like that's going to be a little bit bigger than I wanted. I'm going to set my font size to 51 points and then hit enter and then for my font I'm actually going to select a font called Biffer B-I-F-U-R. This font is available free online and I'm going to have a link to that and the information about this post but now that I have that selected I'm going to type some font out in all caps. I am using all caps and that's important because this font will create a different look if it's not all capped. So I've got it all caps. I've typed out some cool font here, Retro Lover, because we all love retro, right? That's why we're watching this tutorial. Uh, it is black. It's not really what I'm looking for in this poster. So I'm going to double click that font, go up here to the color, and down here in the font color I'm going to type in a different number, which I've already pre-selected and I like much better. You can select the same color if you like using uh, the red, green, and blue values that you see here on screen, 177, 141, and 111, or you can choose a font color of uh, your preference. Now I have that on. Oh, it's kind of disappearing, but you know I have a remedy for that. We're actually going to set the font layer to multiply because this allows the texture beneath the font to show through. So we have a nice look to the font and we've inherited some of the texture of all those textures below it. I'm just going to create a second line layer of font uh, and punch in some additional font. I'm going to say bye. Joseph Brewster. Now that's ridiculously gaudy and large, so I'm going to triple click that, set it to 12 pixels, and I'm going to change the font of that second line to Bodoni Standard. 
you can click on your layer to commit that and there we go we have a basic poster design laid out for you using textures which are overlaid multiplied and color burned and we're using a variety of both image layers and texture layers in several different ways just to create kind of a classic really simple vintage look hopefully this will give you an idea of how you can use textures in your own designs and how you can apply them to get uh, that really nice tactile feel to the images that age sort of uh, distressed look and hopefully you just go out and have a blast with this. Feel free to use my images and the textures that I provided for you. Please don't resell them and please don't hurt anyone with them. Other than that, I'm cool. Thank you for watching. Have a lot of fun in Photoshop and come back next time.